great. Better not <laughs> finally using this. I got this back in the summer and before Emily and I actually built this shed. So the shed is sitting on top of that cellar that we or that I dug and, and built was that two years ago now, a year and a half. Yeah, year and a half I think ago. I dug this cellar out with the plans of actually building a workshop here and then changed our minds completely with what happened at the old property. So we re, re uh, jigged the entire plan and the homestead. So this became the garden area. Well, it was always the forest garden, but became just a garden area, growing area and food storage. So big vegetable garden right there orchard right here behind us, um, oak uh, forest here and over there, uh, full of acorns and, other, and beech nuts. And then um, this shed is storing the all the pots and the growing materials and everything, growing medium for starting plants next um, all over the winter. And for that reason, we fully insulated these walls. Have to install the window and the uh, window and the door still, which uh, I think Emily and I will do that probably next week as the weather changes. But being fully insulated with a good window and a good door means that we can actually heat the space fairly easily. And I think we are going to do that this year, um, depending on like when we start seeds, for example. I mean, so this thing here, the lichen is being run off the four panels on the roof, which are. What, 1280 watts, uh, three uh, or four 320 watt panels feeding into this light can. This has uh, 248 volt ba batteries uh, back in the back of it, and it's providing well, that's a 20 amp outlet, and I have a 30 amp outlet right here, and this is a 20 amp input. So we'll hook up a wire so that we can charge this thing in the winter if we did. Uh, drain all the power out of it and there's not enough sun to, to charge it. Uh, so I'll hook up a generator permanently, um, a gas power generator so that I can uh, fire that up and have it already ready to charge immediately. Oh, we also need to fire it up. Um, the, the AC 30 amp outlet, what I'm doing is mounting this, it's sort of, it's like a, um, it's like a disconnect and a, and a service that will feed a, 60 amp panel that I'm going to mount up here. The reason I'm putting that much power is that this freezer is going to go downstairs down into the cellar as soon as we get a door built for the front of the cellar. Um, that's going to keep the temperature a lot more stable down below so we'll have um, like e fairly even temperature um, which is going to be well above zero, well above freezing. So that's you know, it's kind of irrelevant for the winter, but in the summer, we want that cooler space down there so the freezer's not working overtime. So that's going down below, and then up here we'll put the uh, freeze dryer. So we'll have a platform here that the freeze dryer can run because it's quite loud and it's nice to have it in its own building. And again, if it's generating heat, which it does, you can, and this being fully insulated, we can actually run it in here and have the temperature about right for doing that freeze drying and this thing will run that it's actually surprising how much how little power the freeze dryer uses surprisingly that this thing can easily provide that so uh, for that reason because we're going to have multiple like this has one ac plug on it so what i need is to have several so by having a sub panel we've already only and i run ran the wires down to the sellers is this there's an outlet down there to plug this in, and there's, uh, I think, two lights. And then in here, we'll have at least one light, and we have, have sockets, three sockets in here, so we can plug whatever in, charging or a heat lamp or whatever, whatever we need to power in here. And then eventually, the plan is to put a, a greenhouse just out from the shed right here at the back of the garden, another uh, sort of just a rectangular greenhouse. And that would need some power, like lights and maybe a circulating pump for water or something. You know, we haven't put this through its paces really for a winter yet or for a full year, which I'm excited to do. But um, Emily did run some power tools and stuff off of it, and of course, it performed perfectly. And that's a lot of panels to uh, supply this, so I think it's going to work out well for us. I'm going to put all the specs for this thing down in the description below so you can really get a feel for what it can do and what it can power. Um, 
I'm not utilizing it, like I said, to its maximum potential, of course, right now, because it's not hooked up to everything. But once I get that the sub panel on, the uh, it, it's really good for a backup, really, is what it, it's good for, is to hook it up to your house, have this thing fully charged, because it charges actually pretty fast. So you can charge it with an AC, like with your grid power or your solar power, and have that on standby. So that if you lose your power in your house, you just fire it up through a transfer switch like this into your main circuit breaker or, or panel and then you can run whatever you've isolated for running in your house so being 30 amp I th we've had one in the past where it, you can hook up a generator but i think it was a 60 amp this being 30 wouldn't run quite as many appliances but you just choose what you want to run like let's say the blower on your furnace and your um, well pump or something like that that this would be perfect for doing that, plus some essential lights and ignition switches, maybe for for uh, any heating source. So perfect for a backup. That's really what I see this thing um, as being really ideal for, being on wheels, being portable, um, being powerful enough to store a fair bit of energy without taking up a huge amount of space, but also not needing to know much about um, electricity or solar powered electricity just have this power bank ready to go all the time so that's the biggest advantage i would say to it for me because we don't have power here this makes um sense to have this redundancy because in the main cabin i have the full energy system for again a 48 volt system it's very similar actually the power um, storage as this because i'm not using that much power i don't use that much power anymore um but I just, I'm going to hook up a few extra panels at, at four there now. I'm going to put two more so that I have a little bit more storage and probably get at least one more battery, especially for like winter. And same thing, I'll have a generator hooked up to that one as well. So I have the two systems redundancy. They're also far enough apart that I couldn't use them both in uh, one system anyway. But this being power, I could always take this and plug it in um, and add this power to the cabinet if necessary or to the workshop. You know. So all the technical stuff is on the display and I also have it on an app on my phone so I can actually monitor this and actually control it from the phone which of course a lot of things have run by apps like that now but it is convenient. I'm not typically one to <laughs> use all of the technology but especially as I try to you know offload some of the online stuff that I'm doing. This is not the most efficient freezer of the three that we're running or four that we're running but being so small it doesn't use much power. It's um, really mostly for game and Cali's food. So, oh, fat. So, this is all pork fat that's going to get rendered down this winter. And then I've got to, you know, some deer meat for Cali. Trimmings, she gets all the trimmings. Uh, I've got these whole quarters here. It was too cold to hang them, so I think what I'm going to do is, like when I shot the deer this year, so I think what I'll do is, uh, I might prosciutto that, like cure it, hang it, or smoke it, smoke them whole. I've got four of them like that still, plus all the trimmings, so I think, uh, yeah, I'll show you that later, but I think it might just get hung in the cellar with some air circulation. So, I'm going to get this closed up, and then refreeze again.